One question that I get asked all the time, you know, how was I able to stay positive and motivated in what was certainly the worst time of my life? I mean, I'd lost my, my money, I'd lost my freedom, I'd lost my children for a time, my wife bottomed out, right? And I said, you know, I think about it, I said, you know, here's the secret. When I was in jail, in those moments, you know, in the, in the worst moments of all, were at nighttime, when you're in your bunk, and people were asleep and you're alone with your thoughts and you could just really get negative. And the answer was, is that in bed, when I was alone with my thoughts, I would close my eyes and I would visualize the faces of my two children. And I closed my eyes, I'd see their faces, I knew I could let them down so badly, cause them so much pain. And I said, there is nothing I won't do. There's no length I won't go to to prove to these kids that their dad can do it right. That their dad's gonna come back even better than before. And it was all about proving to my children that you could come back from failure, that you could make the world right, and I could be an example, make them proud of me. That was my why. It was all about my kids. And that's the secret. Your why, it's never about you. You meet somebody wealthy, they, their family at one point was not wealthy. And then the one shows up. The one. One person changes the family tree forever. In my family, I'm the one. And it wasn't because I wanted it or I hoped for it. I fought for it. I want to win. I want to fight for my family. I want my mom and dad proud of me. I want my kids proud of me. I want me proud of me. I want to look in the mirror and be happy with the man I look back at. That he gave it everything. That he went for it. That is you. That is you. That no one can do it for you but you. And even though you face disappointments, even though you will experience some setbacks, it goes with the territory. You must understand that. But here's the truth. Most people's dreams can be bought. With enough failure, with enough rejection, they will sell their dreams. They can't still fight. They can get a little bit, but when it gets a little too hot, they go, boom, so buy the dreams, you can have it. It's not worth it to me. And their will to win is viable. You can buy it, but if you decide my will cannot be bought, I don't care how long it takes, you can't buy this dude out. I'll keep fighting for my family. I'm the one. I'm going to change my family tree forever. That's the decision. Decide now. You're going to keep negotiating the price, or can you not be bought? When people die, or people get sick, or something happens in your life, if all you're doing it for is a car and a house, that can stop you. But if you're doing it for your mom, for your siblings, for your family, for your community, nothing can stop you. You cannot be broken. When you have an intrinsic goal, when you're doing it because you value it, when you're doing it because you can, when you're doing it because it represents who you are, when it's internal, nothing can stop you. When you leave this room, you take care of dog on every single thing. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your background is. Don't let nobody fool you. If you're willing to grind on Monday, if you're willing to grind on Tuesday, they can't stop you. I don't have to accept the life that was given to me. I can create my own reality. This paradigm concept is pretty powerful. To be able to shape your future, you have to be willing and able to change the paradigm. Now you see, we're all able, but we're not all willing. We're not all willing to study the same thing over and over and over and over and over and over again. I mentioned about Phil Goldfein. He, um, he came to see me, he'd heard about me and he came to, he phoned and he wanted to come and see me. That was 20 years ago. Every time I'm doing a seminar, he's here. I tell him to take a book and study this book. He studies it. I was talking to him yesterday and I was telling him about this one piece of literature I'm reading. I had it on my phone, so I sent it to him. I have no question in my mind, he will study that little piece of literature. He didn't quite know why I was telling him to do it, but he found out it worked, so he never stopped. He just kept doing it. And that's the way it was with me. What you have to do is totally illogical. Logic stops most people. See, it was logic that stopped people trying to figure out how to fly. The Wright brothers were being totally illogical. You're going to find that logic stops most people. 
It's illogical to keep reading the same book over and over and over again relative to the way we've been trained. Well, if we've got it right, our results are always under construction. Always. We should forever be trying to improve. I don't care how good you get at it, you can get better. Better is a nice word. I love it. Doesn't matter how well you're doing, you can do better. Now, there's the question you've got to ask yourself. Are you ready? Am I really ready? You see, when Ray gave me that book, I was ready. Now, if you had to ask me if I'm ready, I wouldn't have known. But I really wanted to change. I was so sick of living the way I was living. I wanted to change. I wanted to change all kinds of things. As he told me, he said, you could change your environment. But I didn't consciously and deliberately change who I was mixing with, but I automatically did. I started to mix with a totally different group of people. We're attracted to people that are much like ourselves. And if we want to change, we've got to start surrounding ourselves with the different people. Charlie Tremendous Jones was a great speaker. Good man. God, I like that guy. He's gone now, but he, he said, uh, he used to phone. Tremendous Bob, how are you? And, and he was a wild man when he's speaking. He said, we are the product of the books we read and the people we associate with. Simple rule, and he's right. Well, that's what you have to ask yourself, am I ready? You can't develop and manifest your greatness. You can't be a high achiever if you don't feel good. You don't take care of yourself. So I'm taking care of me. And then you know what? It takes the edge off your life. It helps you to manage things rather than allowing them to manage you. Gives you more personal power to deal with stuff. Take care of you. Now here's something else I suggest for you. Become aware of what your needs are and develop compassion towards yourself despite your human defects. Develop compassion for yourself despite your human defects. You will never be perfect. Hello. You will never be perfect. You're human. You've made a lot of mistakes. You've done a lot of dumb, stupid things. Guess what? You're not through yet. <laughs> You're going to do some more. Hurry up and get it over with. <laughs> it's all right. You got to learn to be gentle with yourself. Make it all right. What you don't know, mistakes that you make, it's okay. Handle it. Learn from the experience. Decide that you are going to whatever you become involved in to be up front, to be true to yourself. Are you getting what you need out of it? And be up front with people and tell them what you need from them. Don't assume that they know. Don't say, I thought you knew. No, tell people up front, here's what I need from this in order for this to work for me. Be up front with your stuff. Tell them up front so they're not surprised later on. So your feelings aren't hurt later on. See, if they tell you up front they can't do it, now you know you can keep on stepping. But tell people up front, here's what I want. In order for me to play this game with you, if we're going to dance, this is what I got to get out of it. See, if you don't take care of your needs, guess what? You will always have that nagging song in the back of your mind saying, well, when do I get mine? When am I going to start enjoying this? Are we going to have a good time together? Do I get any oodles out of this at all? You're going to start asking that question. Everybody's happy and having a good time, but you? They say, well, we thought you were happy. How could you think that? Well, you weren't saying anything. Well, I'm saying something now. Hope you got that. <laughs> See, we're taught to be quiet and not speak up for ourselves. Not to be selfish. If you don't take care of you, who do you think is going to take care of you? Who's going to look out for you better than you will? No one. No one's going to do that. You got a business? No one's going to take care of your business better than you. Nobody. Nobody. Anything you want to do in life, You've got to take ownership of it and say, hey, I'm going to make this happen. 
Be willing to venture out and do something that you have fantasized about doing. And you know you probably won't be good at it, but do it anyhow. Case in point, I have always wanted to sing. I've always wanted to do that. I'm going to sing a song. If I don't do nothing but just a few lines, chances are, you know. <laughs>